And I think if you had a levy of $3 million that made some sense, would make a, a long-term uh, correction in the city's economic future, I have a lot of faith in the city people of Edmonds. And if you explain that to them and you gave them actual figures on how that would would solve the issues, they would approve it. <coughs> but the way the, the budget was written out, after that two-year period, you then go another $3 million well the next year, another $3.5 million the next year, another $4 million the next year. And there's just no way that I could, if I was on the council, support a levy to the citizens saying, okay, well, it's a one-time levy, but two years from now, we're going to come back at you again, and then we're going to come back at you again. So I think the budget crisis needs to be taken care of in a couple of issues. One is I think there needs to be new sources of revenue. And unfortunately, our source of revenue in the city right now, the main source is property tax. I just got my property tax uh, statement. appraisal statement, uh, and it goes down again next year. So that's not going to be a source of new revenue for the city. So knowing that you're not going to get more revenue, you're going to have to look at the expense side. And some of the some of the categories on the expense side, I didn't know what they meant, and I think you need to have more detail on saying, okay, can you reduce this or not? Uh, wages and benefits, uh, those are going to score are some of the higher increase ones. I think those need to be looked at. Again, I don't know the details of are you adding more people, are you giving more raises, what are you doing? But I think those things need to be looked at. And no matter what you do as far as levy, you're going to have to get it down so your increases and expenses don't go up faster than your increases in revenue. Now, potential sources of revenue might be the fiber optic. I think the fiber optic adds a lot of value, and I know they're working on a business plan for it. Uh, we're fortunate that the fiber optic is being given to the city for free, so they could either resell it, or they could use it to attract more businesses to increase the tax base, or they could just lease the lines out to some other internet service provider and just take in money that way. But that would be one potential source of revenue developing other retail areas, although retail I don't think is a very big part of the city's budget. But I think watching expenses and coming up with new source of revenue is, is really the only choice you have. What about tourism? Tourism? I'm sorry? Tourism? What about tourism? Tourism Tourism is a, you know, you look, you look at the city of Edmond, I, I think tourism would be great, but I don't see what would attract me to come to the city of Edmond. So the downtown area is good. The, the uh, festivals are good. You can expand upon those. I think the, the problem is the linkage between the waterfront and the downtown area. And I, I see that a quagmire because you got railroad tracks you gotta go across, you got ferry traffic you gotta go across. Uh, where the Skipper's property is, where the Antique Mall is, seems like it would be great property, but it's bounded on both sides by four lanes of dangerous traffic. Uh, so there needs to be, and maybe through uh, economic stimulus packet or, or dollars from the federal government, you can figure out some way to take care of that issue. But, but that's a hard piece of property to develop. Good. Yeah, I'm up. <laughs> My pet project question. So outside of, I know you're a numbers guy, <laughs> but is there some, maybe, and if it's a numbers thing, that's fine, but is there maybe a non-numbers or just something that you would like the city to get excited about? You know, I'm not a visionary. I, 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 Council President Bernheim had a great vision he talked about in his visioning meeting last week. Other people have good visions. Uh, I'm more of a nuts and bolts numbers sort of guy. Uh, I would like to know the vision of the citizens of Edmonds, uh, and I would have meetings. I'd have weekly coffee where I'd come on down, have a cup of coffee with, with Harry, and tell me what you have to think. Uh, I'll worry about the financial sort of making sure that the city can afford to do what you want, but I think somebody else needs to have a pet project. I don't have an agenda of any project that I'm interested in. Fair enough. Thanks. No question. Just thanks for your analysis that you gave us uh, a couple weeks ago. Okay. I've never been of the opinion, as some have, we just do a levy and it answers our questions uh, because the numbers just don't add up. Um, we do need that levy committee. We do need to look at the ongoing expenses before we earn the right to propose a levy. Um, yeah. And so I appreciate what you presented and what you say. Um, I mean, I agree with you. I, I think, again, I have a lot of faith in citizens. Evidence. I think they'll approve a levy if we've done the proper study to prove that we really need a levy. Yeah, and, and so I guess I was gonna follow up with what apparently you just answered. Um, okay. I, 
I, I believe the people of Edmonds will support a levy, even in difficult times, if they know that we've done our job first. And so I guess my question to you was, would you anticipate uh, a levy uh, being able to pass? And obviously you've said it, it, your answer is, it depends if, if, if we've done our job first. Yeah, I, I can't, I couldn't with any integrity go to the citizens of Edmonds and ask them to pass a levy unless I'd really done a thorough analysis of what the needs are. And then I would like to have both budgets. I'd like to say, okay, this is the budget if we pass the levy, this is the budget if we don't pass the levy, and lay that out for the citizens saying, if you approve the levy, we can do these things. If you don't approve the levy, we can do these things. And I wouldn't want to do it like scare tactics. We're going to close all your parks. I'd want to have really done some, some good analysis and show them exactly what the choices are. And then let them make the choice. It's their money. Thank you. Okay, thanks. There is a minute left. Do you have an, any more points? There's a minute left. Um, the only thing I'll talk about is the mayor versus um, city, city manager. manager. <laughs> and I listened to Mr. Wilson's pro uh, proposal on that. That makes perfectly good sense to me. What is it we're trying to fix? Uh, then I did some uh, analysis of the presentation that uh, Mr. Plunkett put out in the packet and took a uh, like what percentage of cities of any size have a mayor versus a council member? What of cities that are close to ours? And not that the city of Edmonds should do what everybody else does. They really need to figure out what's best for them. Then Ms. Buckshness gave me some research that she'd done. And so I don't know what the answer is, but again, I have faith in the citizens. And I think if we give them fair and proper information on what the, what the two choices are, uh, they can make that choice. And one of the problems is if you hire a mayor who isn't a good manager, the whole administration of the city kind of goes down the tubes. On the other hand, I like sort of the, like the federal government where you have the mayor who serves as the president and the council, so you have some, some balance between the two. So I really don't know the answer, but I just think we should study it. And I think, again, if we're going to make it to the citizens, we have to make sure we give them a fair, and a fair presentation so they can make a right choice. Yeah, Mr. So I just want to follow up and make sure I understand, because if you were in fact appointed to the city council, you'd be making this decision. Um, you're at least willing, apparently, at this time, to at least put it on a ballot and let the people of Edmonds decide. I don't know how many put it on a ballot yet, but I'm willing to study it and, make, and find out whether it makes any sense. Uh, I don't know that it makes sense. My my initial impression was that it doesn't. Now I've now I've done some more study. And I think well, I'm open to the issue. I think. The other council members are going, to, are going to need to, and they should need to, whether it's I'm on the council or not, do some thorough analysis and say, this is why we think we should do it, or this is why we shouldn't do it. So at this time, you couldn't say to me that you'd be willing to put it on the ballot? No, but I also wouldn't say I'd refuse to put it on the ballot. Okay, Thanks. Okay. thank you very much, Mr. Gatchins. Thank you. Thank you.